Apple just released the first public beta of iOS 26. After testing it out for the last month, here are the things that you should try first. Real quick, if you want to keep up to date with the latest Apple news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. In June, Apple announced all of its new software platforms, all with the 26 identifier. Now the public beta of these is available for anyone to download and test. I will say, it's still beta, so there are still going to be bugs, perhaps battery life issues, and possibly things even worse. So take the dive, realizing what you're getting into. Things will change by this fall. With that said, let's get it. The first thing I'd suggest is admiring the new interface. If you're eager to try the beta, you will probably be excited by the liquid glass UI. You can see it all across the UI from the new tab bar design to control center to the lock screen. On the lock screen, I love the time that morphs around subjects and the 3D spatial effect it can give to your photos. I also love the new option for widgets down at the bottom. On your home screen, there are new options for icons. You can now set icons to dark mode or even clear. There are a lot of knockoffs of liquid glass showing up on Android, but none of them with all the little touches and effects that Apple has. I love how as you swipe up from the lock screen, the lines distort around the edges like actual like glass, or as you swipe through things, you can see light refracting off of the controls below. Personally, I'm a big fan of it. Let me know down below in the comments how you feel about liquid glass. Do you want more of it, less of it, or just none at all? Vote down below. If you use CarPlay, you also have to set up your new widgets. Apple added a whole new dedicated widget view that you can customize on your iPhone. I set up widgets for sports scores, my glucose levels, some of my smart home accessories, and even music. Any third party widget that works in standby mode will work here, and it's great. CarPlay also added live activities too, but you don't have to do anything to set those up. They just work right away. For the phone app, you can try out the new UI, as well as enable the new call screener. With this on, your phone will automatically answer unknown callers for you. It will then ask who they are and what they want before ringing through to you and telling you right on your screen. It's amazing and goes a long way towards stopping the obnoxious spam calls and telemarketers. If you don't have time to answer, you can just tap a response and your phone will repeat that back to them. So cool. With iOS 26, your iPhone is getting two new apps, I believe, versus Preview, which is really handy for dealing with PDFs and other documents. There isn't much to see in it though until you need to use it. The other new app is games, which I do think is worth checking out if you need some entertainment. It shows you what you're playing right now, what your friends are playing, various events going on in different games, and suggestions on what to play next. There are new challenges, co-op and multiplayer options, and much more. If you subscribe to Apple Arcade, it has all of those games in here too, in like one central gaming location. It's one I recommend checking out now and then coming back to as new games are released or as you're actively like competing with friends and family. This year, Apple is making AirPods beta available to everyone. To enable the beta, go into settings, find your AirPods, then enable the beta at the bottom for each set of AirPods that you own. Once they update on their own, you'll get access to all the new AirPods features too. I did a whole video breaking those down, which I encourage you to check out, and I've linked it here for you. AirPods 4 and AirPods Pro have new higher quality audio recordings using their microphones. You can get charging reminders when the battery's low, and you can control your iPhone's camera. Plus, they can automatically pause when you fall asleep. I need that one when I'm traveling. Finally, if you're an iPad user, you have to try out the new windowed interface. You get to decide between full screen apps, as usual, or running everything in a window. It's like a whole new way of using iPad. It's much more powerful for multitaskers and perfect with the larger screen tablets or external screens. Of course, there's a lot more new here. So take the time to dig through your device 
and be sure to check out all of my other videos that I've been doing. I've done deep dives into CarPlay, tvOS 26, Apple Intelligence, and more. I also encourage you to file feedback. Apple listens to its users. You guys all complained enough that it reverted back to an older version of the photos design, so you won there. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe. I'll see you guys all in the next video.